Latinos Out Loud podcast. Wow. Yo, Happy New Yo, Happy New Yo, everybody. Feliz Año Nuevo. Feliz Año Nuevo. Happy Muchacha. New Yo, Happy, Happy New, New Year. Happy New a todo el mundo. Happy New Year. That's what this is. Latinos Out Loud 2023, Frank. Aye. 2023. That's Frank. yo, that, that adds up to seven. That's my favorite number. It's going beyond this year, yo. Two plus zero plus two plus three equals mm. seven. That's yes, Frank. Rachel. Yes, and that's a lucky number, Frank. It is. Yes, it is. Seven is lucky. Oh yeah. All right. I'm feeling mm. lucky. Seven, seven, seven. Let's go to Foxwoods. Let's yeah. go play some machines. Yep. You know, it's on and popping. Guys, hi. It's your girl. We're back. Uh, my name is Rachel. Hey. And I I might just drop La Loca in 2023. No, no, don't do that. You're going to stay La Loca forever. You La Loca. You yeah, yeah, you should La Loca I, forever. Should I keep La Loca and just... We should do... Rachel? You know what? We should do like a survey. Should we keep La Loca name or... Yeah, yeah. It's 2023. I say we keep it. Lots of changes coming our way. Change is good. Delta. You know what right. I'm saying? Delta Facts. Delta change. And, and here with me is my buddy. My friend to the end. He's got conspiracies and really is just a great friend. Frank, thank Davis. you very much, Rachel. It's uh, Frank Spiracy from the Heights. I'm off, I'm still up here, Rachel. I'm in the Heights. Wash Heights, baby. In the in the building, in the building, Rachel. Yes. Feeling lately like Washington Heights is my third home. Okay. It's like, like you don't come out of here. I think I bumped into you a few times in the streets, just I, randomly walking now. Oh man, because what happens is when you have friends in the hood, in the heights, in this case, it's just like, yo, just come through and stay over. Just come through and stay over. So I just go through and I stay over. You know what I mean? And then mm -hmm. I'm like in the heights, waking up, getting breakfast and seeing people that I know. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just great. Thank Wait you up. for embracing me. Washington Heights embraces me, welcomes me in. Um, You know, doesn't spit me back out like the Upper East Side. But um, we've been busy this holiday break. I, Oof. Like, Frank, I meant to say break Frank, but I combined the words. It's okay. Uh, Frank, talk to me. How was your holiday break? It was amazing. I don't know how many I was. We were trying to go back and see how many events we went to. It was like a blur. Um, I mean, there's one that really stood out. I mean, I still can't, you know, forget it was the the Webby event you took me to. That was how informative and how you know. I, I just get, grabbed so much information and the, the, the venue was so beautiful. It was by, uh, I believe, uh, by a cat's delicatessen downtown. I think, I don't think it was on Spring Street. It was somewhere down there. But what an amazing event. Um, it was at the Soho House, but yes. the Lancy or oh my God, version. That place is so beautiful. It was gorgeous. Anything wow. related or connected to the Soho House, you know you better come dress correct. Oh okay? my Lord. That was amazing, yeah. Rachel. It and really that panel was. was, I mean, so informative. I mean, what's going to happen with with podcasts going forward in 2023 and 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 beyond? I just, I just, you know, Frank Spiracy grabbed all the information and just downloaded it on the down, you know, down in the brain. Well, what was some of the highlights of the event? I'd love to give listeners a, a little more color. Like we were invited to this Webby's event. It was pretty exclusive. There weren't that many people there. No, nah, it was the it's the creme of the creme. And it was all about the future of media consumption. Correct. And so they were talking about the trends, which I really actually recommend those of you that have some nerdiness to you like frank and i do about digital trends um you know media consumption head over to the webby's website because true talk they've got the webby awards which i'm currently judging as we speak all right frank knows this because 
I inundate you with text messages. I'm like, <laughs> yo, you got to check this out. Because what happens is I nerd out. Like, I'm here judging the entries and also seeing the audio gold that is out there in the podcast verse. Mm. So to me, it's really interesting. So I have to share that love. But anyway, getting back to the Webbies, if you head over to WebbyAwards.com, you'll find a lot of interesting things. Um, there's archived information on the events that they've hosted, like this one, about the future of media consumption. Then they've got this amazing archive of all the past winners and nominees, which we're in there. Just search mm. for Latinos Out Loud and you'll see that we were Webby Award nominated in 2021 for Best Comedy Podcast. Right. But aside from that, you also get access to this archive of incredible work. Basically, the Webbies are like, you know, the Oscars, Tonys, Grammys. Or Emmys. The Webbies, the Emmys. Of the web, right? Right. Anything digital on the web so check it out there's incredible archived data there so there's a lot of web 3 talk and a lot of metaverse talk and basically maybe down the line in four or five years we're going to be able to conduct an actual podcast in the metaverse while we're sitting in our house as opposed to sitting on zoom so a whole bunch of people you'll be like almost like a caricature in a on a panel but you're not actually there. You're in your house. You have some goggles and you're speaking and your avatar is actually speaking somewhere else while people are watching you. So that's what they were kind of making us envision on what's going to happen in the future. So it was mind blowing because Rachel and I always go back and forth and Jamie are how everything in the metaverse is going to be the future. So look out for that, guys. You know, look into that. That's the future of podcasting from, you know, from this panel that we actually went to. I thought it was really interesting, too, that they pointed out that another trend right now for marketers are all around like micro influencers. So this whole micro influencer uh, approach to marketing and advertising is also trending. And right. for those of you that don't know what a micro influencer is, I mean, I think you're talking to one right now or you're listening to one. Micro influencers are these influencers that have more of a concentrated segment that they address that they speak to fan base they connect to but these influencers are influencing them with just as much impact if you if you think about it uh, from a ratio perspective as these macro influencers with the small fraction of their audience that really engages with the message so the micro influencers message is almost like the puree you know right. what I'm saying it's the puree the, I like that it's the puree, it's the creme de la creme. So I love that these micro influencers are also trending as well. So uh, let me ask so you a question, Rachel. Are they realizing that someone with a million followers perhaps doesn't really hit off if so as someone that has maybe just 10,000 followers? Well, that, that person with 10,000 well followers is more puree than the person that has a million? Well, think about this podcast. Hello, hello. Shout out to you right now listening to us because the research has shown that there's a higher engagement with this medium than that of even like television. They're engaged wow. with more words that we're talking and our guests are speaking on. And so there's that higher, I guess, intensity of engagement via the podcast medium than there is on other mediums. You know, with mm. TV, we watch it. But like with podcasting, it's just high engagement. So with micro influencers, there's high engagement. There's that high intensity of engagement versus the macro influencers that are trying to reach uh, or, you know, communicate, convey their message to the hundreds of thousands and millions. Um, who is really like engaging with that message and is it impactful? Mm. I don't know. Go to the webbyawards.com to learn more about these fascinating topics. And uh, that was a great event to go to, Frank. We oh, networked yeah. the room. Oh, yeah. That was fun. That was fun. But you know what was yeah, more yeah. fun? Your hilarious show. The hilarious show. That was hilarious. And I had so much fun with all the all the ladies. Uh, it was amazing. Tell us more about it. How'd that go, Rachel? Oh, Frank. I mean, shout out to you for always being in the mezzanine. You always. Know, That's like, my spot. That's my spot. You know, I got to be over. Frank Spursy got to see everything. Always. You know, there's like Norm of Cheers. There's like Frank of Hilarious. 
And he's always <laughs> up in the mezzanine of the triad theater. <laughs> so I feel like the whole 420 crew was up in the Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. We were fucked up too, by the way. Did you guys light up up there? We had edibles. Was... We had edible, and then we had Sabrina's uh, Coquito. So forget it. I, with oh. the Coquito and the edibles, forget about it. We had a little, we had our spot upstairs. Okay, first of all, I want to shout out the lineup of that last hilarious show, which was the hilarious actually show uh, themed around love, actually the movie and the hilarious or what I was calling the holiday show because it was the hilarious holiday show. Again, mm. So shout out to the lineup of the hilarious show. I mean, Frank, you saw everybody on stage from the Alaska. ladies did they thing. The ladies was the ladies did they thing, yo. I'm gonna shout out the lineup real quick. Shout out to Alana J. Shout Aye. out to Black Rose. Aye. Aye. Be nasty. I green. I Aurelis Mora. I Rafael. I Jasmine Ruiz. I Carolina Teresa. I Michelle Adana. I Sarah and Houghton. I Daddy Diaz. I truly that was the hilarious lineup of twelve hilarious female comedians at the Triad Theater. Now I could tell you what it was like being producer of the show being host of the show co-host shout out to my co-producer and co-host glory glory mora glorelis mora but i would like to know from your pov how you experienced it as a fan up in the mezzanine what was I'm, it like? i mean your shows are always you know it's the the thing about your shows is that you always kind of change it up so you don't know you don't know what to expect right and you kind of hit us with everything. Mm -hmm. The ladies with the stand up were amazing from D nasty to I forgot the first girl at the beginning. Amazing. We talking Shadi Diaz with a special wow. on HBO Max. These Yo, she's no joke. Are on television. So that was amazing. And your, your, the Christmas caroling uh, skits were amazing. I mean, I don't know where to start. I mean, you always give me something different. Uh, you always catch me off guard that I'm like, holy smokes. Like, oh, shit, this one was different. Uh, Black Rose was amazing singing. My boy Chris was like, wow. It was amazing. amazing. It was amazing. The after party, obviously, your after parties, I can never leave, you know. Shout you go out to the that hilarious after parties. You should know that when you go to a hilarious show or a hilarious after party, you shouldn't look at your watch or your nah, phone not or at your all. Apple watch. There's always an after party. There's that after party, you may get stuck party. there. You could get stuck there. And a lot of people, cold. you know what, Rachel, a lot of people run away after they go to the to the triad theater and they try to run because they know if they go to the after party, they're going to get home <laughs> like at five in the morning. I see a whole bunch of people like running back and forth like, yo, I want to go, but I got to get up early in the morning. And then like I got like two, three people to go and they were like, damn, I'm going, bro. So it was yeah. crazy. Yeah. So we've been experiencing events and doing comedy. Um Thank you for coming, Frank. Thank you for supporting. I but love Rachel, that. Rachel, wait a minute. You didn't stop. You didn't stop. You had another event, the Matzo Ball Comedy Show. And I was on Christmas Eve. You don't stop. I don't stop. It's you tiene una batería. ¿Qué eco tú tienes? Um, yeah, I'm part Energizer Bunny, part fairy. <laughs> um, I got a different parts <laughs> to me. But um, I did host a comedy show on Noche Buena this year. <laughs> On December 24th. I'm like, yo, I, Rachel, uh, Merry Christmas. She's like, I'm doing a show today. <laughs> I got to host a show at the Copa. Copa. The Copa Havana. Oh, uh, this night, love in Havana. Of Havana at the Copa. <laughs> Copa uh, Cabana. Okay, look. So there was an all Jewish lineup at the Copa on December 24th. Your show, you had the honor of hosting. Shout out to Roman, the funny Latino, who put this all Jewish lineup together. I had the honor of bringing to the stage the second oldest man performing stand-up in New York City. Did he, have a, did he have a walker? He, George I saw a walk Cars, 88 years old, okay? <laughs> 88, Mazel Tov, Shalom, God bless. <laughs> he came on stage with his walker, he rolled up on stage, literally, uh, and asked me to dance the bossa nova later, which, you know, it was so much fun. Um, and then opens, you know, with just the best joke ever, 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 ever. Opens with the joke, something along the lines of usually the promoters put him on first because they're not quite sure he's going to make it to the end of the show. <laughs> 
And he's 88. <laughs> and I didn't even realize this, but there's somebody like older than him performing stand up. So I had to ask him. And he said, Yeah, there's a 94 year old out here Damn. in New York City. So uh, also shout out to Pamela Roth, the funniest lawyer in of New York City. Um, it was a great show. Mark DeMaio, shout out to him. It was a lot of fun to host an all Jewish show on wow. Noche Buena. So yes, I did the atypical. I should have been like a Dominican eating like, you know, penil and all that stuff on Noche Buena. But no, I was hosting. I was working. Amazing. And we didn't stop from there. After that, in the new year, uh, we went to the Happy Monkey, uh, Vlad's 40th uh, uh, birthday party. Yes. And uh, we had a... We had a very, very good time, Rachel. Well, tell me. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I mean, I, I woke up like at five or six o'clock in the afternoon the next day. I think, I believe you woke up about the same time. Shout out to right. Vlad. I just, I feel like I just woke up from that party. Okay. <laughs> and it's like a week later. I think I just woke up. I'm not wow. sure. But what a party. Yo, shout out to Vlad. Happy birthday. Yes. My dude, shout out to the guys over at Happy Monkey. Yeah, shout out to yeah, Vanessa. Shout out to show. Vanessa. She got me in, bro. They told me they didn't have my name downstairs. Vanessa came down and was like, yo, that's my dude right there. Yo, get that motherfucker in. Vanessa to the rescue. Vanessa will always be there to rescue us with either an infused baked good or <laughs> getting us to the front of the line. <laughs> what? Or just greeting us with a smile. I love yes. that woman. Yeah, so shout out to the guys and gal over at Happy Monkey. They had a wonderful celebration for Vlad's 40th birthday. On a rooftop, yo. That that view was amazing. Oh, my we God. Were on a roof, and it was so 420 friendly. I was, like, in heaven. We oh, were, my God. It was great because we were on a roof close to the clouds and definitely adding smoke to them. Okay? Yes. Yeah, I like uh, that. I like that analogy. Yes, it, there, a lot of smoke. was cloudy but... that night. <laughs> <laughs> New York was cloudy. Yeah. And you know, I met so many great people. I met uh the girl from Audubon. What's your homegirl? Uh Annette. Audubon Society. What is it? I forgot the her name. Audubon so... Hayes Society. Yeah, Annette, Annette Fernandez is her name. Yes, her name. Shout That's her name. Annette. So I met her and I met so many other cool people. Led was there, Led Black. Led Black uptown. Got Led out Black. to Ramon from Happy Monkey. Also, he was there. That's Ramon. Vlad's, you know, partner. So many yep. cool people, man. It's just a Kathy different vibe. Purdy, Black yeah. Rose, Ivan Black Manito, Rose, man. Tommy Alana was K. there. Miko Alana was there. Johnson, Miko from Euphoria. Um, who else we was chilling with? Um Ete, the Tommy Fai K was there, Ivan was there. Yes, um, and the magician, our friend. Yeah, I didn't see him. He told me I forgot his name. He stole uh, Jamie's wallet Devante. one time. Devante. Devante. So it was. I mean, the 420 crowd, man, is there's so much love, man. Yo, shout out to Arian, Arian. Shout out to Mr. Puffington. Shout out to Rose. Shout out to Jose Rose, because all these people are hospitable. They're they're part of the Happy Monkey crew. And they show us nothing but love every time we roll through these events. Facts, facts. You were happy. <laughs> and, you were you were you were happy. Talk about happy, happy, happy monkey, happy Rachel. Yeah, that's a great that's a great way to put it. Happy monkey makes a happy Rachel for sure. <laughs> yeah, and you guys and I was just like, come on, let's do this after party thing, or come on, let's like continue this. And you guys were just like, no, go to sleep, Rachel. <laughs> yeah, it was a Tuesday. It was like three o'clock in the morning already. By the way. Uh, we've done some interesting events. And then like for me, the holidays were very, you know, low key, laid back celebration of the festivities. It was quite lovely. Facts. I did some cooking. All right. I did some cooking on Christmas Day. I saw in your live. You thought sazonando el, po el, el, el pavo. ¿Con qué era? Un sazón de alguien. Well, thank you, Jenny Saldana, for giving me the homemade sofrito. At the hilarious show, she slipped it to me as if it were like, you know, a vial of fucking crack. Crack. It looked it look real. It looked green and red. It had beautiful colors in it. Well, actually, it was crack because that sofrito was <laughs> outstanding. I slapped the shit out of that bird with the sofrito. I was like, fuakata, fuakata. And massaging the sofrito into the turkey. Right. Um, and it really seasoned it well. Speaking of Jenny Saldana, you know, I'm going to talk about it more in Que Lo Que, but she's got a show also coming up at uh, in January at the Triad Theater. Okay. So let's talk about that in Que Lo Que. 
All right. Well, we have a very interesting guest on this episode, Frank. Okay. Okay. This was a fun interview because I love when we get firecrackers. No I doubt. love when we get firecrackers. And he for sure was a firecracker. You oh, guys man. know him. You know him from CNN. Um, you may also know him from his podcast, the Rick Sanchez pa- podcast. You may also know him from his podcast network, Agua wow. Media. Yeah. Agua Media. Agua Media. Uh, it was really fun talking to Rick Sanchez because, like I said, he's got energy and stories. And El Cubano representing. Oh, yeah, city. You know what I'm saying? Uh, down there in the southeast for us. So let's get into this interview. Thank you, Rick Sanchez, for giving us the time. Um, and please enjoy this interview as much as I did. Let's get All right. Guys. I want to just formally introduce our guest. I'm honored. I'm always honored to be in the presence of an award recipient, such as an Emmy Award. We get those a lot here on the Latinos Out Loud podcast. You know what that means. Latinos are winning. Latinos are winning. Gang, 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 gang. Guys, please, if you're driving your cars, LOLeros, if you're mowing your lawn, just take a pause. Please put your hands together for veteran journalist and Emmy Award winner Rick Sanchez. <laughs> Rick Sanchez is on the Latinos Out Loud podcast. Go ahead and take your bow. You've got a piano behind oh, you, for Christ's sake. You're so sweet. Thanks so much. I'm <laughs> I'm bowing to my heart's delight. Thank you. Rick, thank you so much for being on LOL, Latinos Out Loud. We love acronyms here, okay? I love that. Yeah, LOL. Wow. Fascinating topic. I'm, uh, that's a great <laughs> idea for a show. But Rick, CNN and Emmy... I would love if your own, in your own words, you could tell the LOLeros who you are and how you got here. How well, did I, you get here? Uh, you know, it's uh, thanks. We are it, it, when we when people describe someone as successful, I always look at success not in terms of how much money you have. I think your success is based in your life on your experiences and your experiential knowledge of things. And I I was just really lucky. I came to the United States as a refugee, as an immigrant. My parents were like remarkably poor. I didn't even have Christmas toys. We, I dug up the little soldiers out of the ground when we came to America. And those were my Christmas toys when I was a little boy. And my parents combined income with my dad's three jobs and my mom's one job sewing shoes at a factory at Cibonet, I'll never forget the name of it, was basically between ten and eleven thousand dollars combined income a year. So it was it was it was a tough start. And I think that's kind of indicative for so many of us who are Latinos in this country who are able to then muster up the energy to be able to do something bigger than ourselves. And I was very lucky that I was a pretty good student and I was also a pretty good athlete. I ended up with a football scholarship and I was Wepa. studying. At, yeah, I was studying in Minnesota. And then some professors came and they said, you know, you're kind of a pretty bright kid. We think we want to recommend you for a journalism scholarship through CBS News. And I was like, what? what? And of course, you know, <laughs> my mother's like, no, no, you know, tiene que ser médico o ingeniero. And I was like, but mom, they're going to give me a scholarship to study journalism. I could go on to TV. I'm going to be on TV. She goes, yeah, let me ask you something. Next time, the next time you turn on the TV, how many people do you see who look like us? How many? How many people doing the news look like a Sanchez or a Rodriguez? Right? So this is crazy. No, keep going. Do what you do. And I said, nah, I'm going to take it. So I applied. They gave me a scholarship and I was one of the first journalists a long time ago to become or first Latinos to become a journalist. And I went on to work for NBC and we kind of broke a lot of records. And then CNN hired me and uh, I've interviewed President, uh, actually interviewed President Obama, President Carter, President Clinton. I interviewed Mikhail Gorbachev. I actually interviewed President Reagan. I, I interviewed Fidel Castro. I interviewed Manuel Noriega. And I was able to win, you know, two or three Peabody's, which is the most important journalistic award in the United States. I was the only Latino to ever anchor a primetime newscast in the United States, uh, which was a pretty big deal. Rick's list on uh, CNN. 
And uh, all throughout those experiences, you know, I learned so much about who we are and what we can do. But even my experience and everything I was lucky enough to learn and everything I was lucky enough to experience, I, I think one of the things that makes me to this day feel like we need to do more is not so much in terms of what we need to do, but what others, what I would love for others to know about us. We are 20% of the population of the United States. We are the fifth largest GDP in the world. Gross if domestic Latino, product. I paid attention in micro are, and macroeconomics. It is brillante. Not only that, but you're drinking coffee. So that makes you kind of like be, you know, in tune with everything I say. So I'm expecting yeah. you to jump all over these ideas as I say Totally. Them. My heart feels like the stock market right now. I'm telling you. <laughs> Thank you, Cafe Look, Bustelo. Please continue. Please, the statistics, we were, love them. No, Keep them you, Mira, you're, you're, you're right, Rachel. If Think about this for a minute. Just everybody stop what you're doing and think about these words that are about to come out of my mouth. If we, Latinos who live in America, represented a country, instead of just a population within a country, we would be the fifth largest economy, the most, the fifth most powerful economy in the entire world, only behind the United States, China, Japan, and Germany. So we were eighth, but we just moved to five, which means we just passed Brazil, Great Britain, and Italy. No, pardon me, India. So we already passed Italy a long time ago. So think about that, the fifth largest economy in the world. Now, let's do another little game here, which is a lot of fun. And I know you like games, right? Oh, how did you know? You know me well. <laughs> I don't know how, but you do. Let's talk about growth. <laughs> so Latinos in the United States, right, are the third fastest growing economy in the world. So now we're not talking about total GDP. We're talking about GDP growth. So we would be the third fastest growing GDP, which means we're only behind China and India, and then comes Latinos in the United States, the third fastest growing economy in the world. And guess where the United States is? Like fifth. So Latinos in the United States are a faster growing GDP than the United States itself. So then you have to ask yourself, why do they want to get rid of us? Yeah, I want to go back because because I would like to dissect some of the things that you're saying. Can okay. you please define for the LOLeros how one <laughs> segment becomes, and by the, when I say LOLeros, I mean me. How do you define the fastest growing segment of anything? How does that translate? Translate it, that for us. Does that oh, sure. Sense? No, that's a very, yeah. it's a very simple economic principle. All it means is how much do you produce and how much do you consume? So that's usually the measurement of an economy. Latinos in the United States are by far the most vibrant consumers. In other words, Latinos leave the United States tomorrow, the country almost becomes broke or it turns into some like the Netherlands, right? Um, you lose your entire economic consumption base and your production base. Why production consumption? We understand. We eat a lot. We drink a lot. We live a lot. So we spend a lot of money. We're you know we do all those things. But but production, Latinos as a cohort uh, start more businesses than anybody in America, and they also yes. hire more people than anybody in America. So Latinos as a cohort are producing and contributing more to the economy of the United States than just about any other cohort in America. In fact, more than any other cohort in the United States, which is a fascinating thing to, to take in. It's it's like, so when I say we're underrepresented, coño, think about it. We are less than 4% of the representation in the media. We are less than 3% of representation in C-suites and boards. In Hollywood, we're one of two things. We're the guy who mows your lawn or the guy who kills you. So mm -hmm. that's basically we're represented either as criminals or as, you know, laborers. And uh, I can give you the exact numbers on that study that was done, by the way, at USC at the Annenberg School. But when you break all these things down, what you have is, on the one hand, a group of people in America who are over achieving like hell i mean these guys are like you know the la bomba right we are the mm -hmm. bomb when it comes mm -hmm. to economic productivity and vibrancy and all that stuff and then on the other hand we can barely get noticed 
So you, you kind of think, and then we have this thing that this is, and then I'll stop talking because now you're getting me too excited. No, this is like exciting because had. we, Rick, we often talk about how we over-index at the box office. Like we're buying the tickets to see the movies that we don't freaking see ourselves in. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh, you see yourself. You see yourself as a criminal or you see yourself as somebody who has, they, they constantly cast us in very negative roles, which then gets picked up by the news media. And then they talk about us that way. And then the politicians run their campaigns based on, we got to get rid of all these Latinos because they're all criminals and they're all doing bad things. None of that of course is true, but it doesn't matter because nobody knows the facts until you talk to Rick Sanchez and he'll tell you 80% of Latinos are American citizens. 95% of Latinos speak English in the United States under the age of 41. Latinos tend to hire more. Latinos start more businesses, but nobody knows these things. And I'm thinking we yeah. should go out there with a thing on our forehead that says, did you know that about us? Because it's really important for you to know that about us. Well, but it's great we, that you're speaking about it. You spoke about it at Latitude. Shout out to the Latitude Conference. Was this Yeah, baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Talk to us about what, you know, what was your Latitude experience and what was the theme? What was the response? And is well, this sort of a message that you're carrying on a flag throughout the country right now? Because I'm loving it. I feel like we, we want to, we need to amplify your voice. And I hope we're doing that here at Latinos Out Loud. I think we should amplify both our voices together because we should uh, go on stage and like sing a song, a song of like you maybe, sing? you know, I'm, I'm I know here. show tunes. I know <laughs> Led Zeppelin. I mean, my playlist is all over the place. Merengue, bachata, dembo, 80s. Oh, lost stop the world and melt you, Rick Sanchez. So like whatever you want to do. Ooh, Maria, Maria, <laughs> Maria. Oh my Maria. gosh. Yeah. I just met a girl. How am I doing? Name La Loca. <laughs> I don't know why. All of a sudden, even I just changed. I'm not going to talk to Rachel anymore. I'm going to talk to Maria for the rest of this interview. I love the musical interlude because that's also what we do here at Latinos Out Loud. But I'm going to bring it back, if you don't mind. So we often talk about here on the podcast this underrepresentation in Hollywood. And we've heard from some of our guests and some of the internal conversation. Let's make it to the C-suite. Let's get there. Let's be, become the decision makers. Let's write the roles. Let's get in the writer's rooms. Like all this is mm -hmm. so great. What is the solution from Rick Sanchez? Like how do we move this needle? How do we expedite this process? How do we fill the pipeline with those people that we want in the C-suite and decision making rooms? Well, first of all, we don't need them because we're fine without them. But, Ooh. you know, and, and, I, and I think that's important for us to understand. Latinos, here's the thing about us, right? We, we are not the type of people, and God makes all kinds of people, and everybody has their strengths and their weaknesses. And if, if you were to uh, localize what our, what our strength is, we endure. We don't care. Fire me. Fine. I'll get another job. It'll be better. Fire me from that one. Fine. I'll get another job. I don't sit around doing, wah, 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 I feel sorry for me because I didn't get this or because somebody said something mean about me. We don't care. We, we, we're just strivers. We, we're we just go. This Triumphant. is, this is, yeah, this is, this is who we are. So that's why when you look at what Latinos represent in the United States, it, it's like, it's so on pressing for anybody who wants to look at it. So in the end, the reason, and this, and, and I say this because I don't want people to think, oh, look at Rick Sanchez, always complaining. Latinos don't get this. Latinos don't get that. I don't give a crap. If you don't, if you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. I just think it's important that we should be informed. That's all. I want people, the, the key for us and the reason I started Agua Media and the reason I do the Rick Sanchez podcast is because I want to I... share information with people that they may not know and Look, I, 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 CNN fired me and I said, okay, I'll start a company. So I started a, you know, $4.5 billion company and that's great. And now I'm sort of wealthy, I guess. But so what? You're, you're only as wealthy nice. as what you share and the experiences you have. So I was in between getting a yacht and going sailing for the rest of my life or starting a new company to tell people about who Latinos are so I can help we can help uplift others so they can become like Rachel and like Rick and do what they love to do. Um, one of the things I've realized recently that I think sets us back somewhat is we we don't 
um, focus on our own identity. And, and let me tell you what I mean. There's there's this new thing going around in America where we would never call people by the color of their skin, but now that's what we do. It used to be rude to say somebody is a colored person. Ooh, we have some colored people living across the street. And if you said that, people would go, what? Don't, don't, don't say that. That's not a nice way to, you don't call people that are colored, but now we do. And the media has decided that we are people of color. So you are a person of color. And I am a person of- talking about the phrase BIPOC? Is this the-, the I don't know what BIPOC? the phrase are, but I am not a person of color. I just happen to be a Latino who PLC, lives in America. Right? I'm a Latino American. I'm not a person of color. And let me tell you what happens with person of color. We've allowed people to throw us into this bag of color thing. And that is, and so we're living there with everybody who apparently is not white. Now, I don't know what white means either because I have some Italian friends who apparently are white and they're four times darker than I am and five times darker than you are. So mm -hmm. what is white and what is people of color? So they put us in this bag called people of color. So that way, big companies, I don't know, pick one, Nabisco. Hello, Nabisco. You know what you need? We looked and you need more people of color. So they go, okay, we're going to go get some people of color. So then they hire 10 people and seven of them are black and two of them are Asian. And one of them is Latino and say, there you go. We got our 10 people of color. And we go, wait a minute. I love my black brothers and I love my Asian brothers. And we're, we hang together and we're homies just like you and I. But we're 20% of the population. Asians are 4% of the population. And African-Americans are like 11 or 12% of the population. How come we got one? Well, it doesn't matter. Just as long as you get people of color in there, it doesn't matter. Well, no, it does matter. It does matter. And, and until we start setting ourselves as we are Latinos and we have certain things and I'm, I want to move, I want it, I want it to include women and LGBT and I want it to include blacks and I want it to include Asians and all that stuff. But why are we constantly getting short shrifted? I'll tell you why we're getting short shrifted because we bought into this color thing. So but pretty soon it's like, we're, we're not, we're not Latinos. We're just people of color. We're not Latinos. And it lets people put us in categories where we don't necessarily want to be. I, you know, look, I'm a journalist. You know what the most important thing is in communicating? You know this because you're funny and you're smart. Use the term that is most concrete, is not abstract, is not opaque, and best represents what you're talking about. So if you're talking about a Jamaican-American, say Jamaican-American. Don't just say some black dude. I mean, if you're talking about a, a Mexican-American or Honduran-American or Honduran-American who grew up in East LA or a Cuban-American who grew up in, in the Bronx, say a Cuban-American who grew up in the... Now I know who you're talking about. This thing where, oh, they're just people of color and they're white. What the hell? What are we, nuts? And that's a problem. So you ask me what I think we need to do to change things. I think the first thing we do is let's tackle that. Well, you're tackling, and I want to just, before we wrap up this interview, thank you for your POV. Um, I really appreciate every word that you say. Totally. Now, look, you not only have a podcast, you have a podcast network. <laughs> yeah. So podcaster to podcaster, I celebrate this space quite often. I'm really proud of this Webby nomination that you see. I'm going to just price is right the game here real quick <laughs> and just like do a little, you know, Barker's beauty thing here. Um, <laughs> I really appreciate the space for what it does for my thoughts. I'm able to communicate my comedy and my message, you know, and I do like to have a philanthropic angle lying somewhere within my comedy. Sometimes it's women's reproductive rights. Sometimes it's domestic violence awareness. You know, catch me on a different day. It might be something else. <laughs> But well, I hope I didn't get I too heavy. To... I mean, I, I, no, I, I'm a, I'm I, get, no. You know, I, I don't want to make people think, oh, Rick Sanchez, he's too intense. We were supposed, I was supposed to be funny. I, I, no, I you're not funny. supposed to be funny. That's my oh, wait, job. I know, I know what's funny. I could show you something that's funny. <laughs> wait, hold on. I think there's something funny over here. I was gonna, so, I'll ask the question. All right, wait, wait, I, I gotta show you this. Where's the fireplace? We're going on a tour of Rick's house. So, that? that that's me with my son Robbie and President Carter, and um. So I, they called me and said, the president is going to be up in his suite and he, and he wants you to interview him. So I went over to interview him. And then my son 
while I was with the president, went to the president's closet and was playing with his shoes. Um, <laughs> and then the secret service said, oh my God, there's somebody in there. And they kind of freaked out. And then they grabbed my son and then the president grabbed him and put my son Robbie on his shoulders. And then we snapped that picture and we're laughing our asses off because they were, oh, they thought God. somebody was about to try and attack the president. It was just my son playing with his shoes. And then we went on to do the interview. And there's President Carter. There's me and there's my son, Robbie. So there you go. I thought Are I- Are you guys seeing this? First of all, I love the tour and I, I love, well, that picture is beautiful, but this tour is so cool. I oh, don't cool. think we've ever I've never done this gone- before. We've never done this either on the Latinos Out Loud podcast. This is super cool. Okay, so while you are up and about, talk to me about the podcast and Agua Media because I want to hear, I want to get media and media about the meat and potatoes here. So tell us about your podcast and the network because I want to celebrate this space. We are pumping this space with some pretty dope content, yourself included. So let's shout it out right now, right here, podcast to podcast love. Well, yeah, it's Agua Media. Agua because we're Latinos and Latinos, they're like water, man. You, No matter where we go, we find a way to uh, absorb. We find a way to uh, distribute ourselves so that we just fill everything in, uh, kind of like what we've done in the United States. Uh, I guess our marquee show is the Rick Sanchez podcast. I talk a lot about news, but I also talk about what, you know, because I've learned so much in my life and because I've fallen and failed so many times and yet somehow then succeeded, um, I've learned a lot of lessons. I've learned everything from the importance of being habitual, of having a routine, uh, to understanding how to manifest yourself properly, uh, leadership skills, um, what, what, what you need to know to be organized. Um, there, there's just, there, I could go on and on. So I kind of mix in for people. Look, I'm an old guy. I've been around a long time. I may have been the first Latino to be, uh, you know, to interview four presidents and to be all over the world and to win all these freaking awards and then to build a billion dollar company. And I, and I guess I'm lucky because all those things have happened in my life. But um, along the way, I've also learned a lot of things. You know, they say in life, you should always set a goal for yourself. Set a goal to make a million dollars, not because you'll make a million dollars, but for what it will make of you to reach that goal. And in life, in the end, you look back at your life and you say, what did I learn? What did I do? What did I manifest in myself? What is it about myself that now has given me this growth or given me this position? And, and, and that's value. So how do you create the value to be successful? My podcast talks specifically three times a week about things we can do to create that value in ourselves as Latinos, as people, as outliers in many ways. That's what I do. And then we are have 11 other podcasts that are going to be essentially explaining different factions of that, how to build a small business, how to use empathy in business and relationships. Um many other topics that take you through these things that I think are important. So really we're, we're, we're a help center, a learning center for others based on experiences that people have where they've learned how to succeed. And also based on maybe some of the voids for the Latino market right now, maybe we need access to this information to become more successful. Thank you for putting such strategy together. So check out Rick Sanchez, the podcast Agua Media. Thank you so much for your contributions to the community, Rick. And thank you for your time on the Latinos Out Loud podcast. This was so much fun and so different. <laughs> I I mean, can we ride out with something? Show us your, okay, show us your most prized possession within the vicinity of the space that you're in right now in your home. It could be your piano or an award. I know like you showed us that picture, so it's hard to top, but is there something wow. else? My what prized possession would probably be my family. Wait, let, I'll show you familia. You want to see familia? Hold on, yes. I can do this. Yes. Very. Yes. It is. Look at that. How beautiful is Because I'm going to show you what every Latino thinks about most. Mi mamá, mi papá, my children, my wife. Beautiful. And there they are. God bless. God bless. Typical we Latino about family. This. Rick, we talked about this at the top of the interview. The common denominators, family will always unite us. 
Latinos, we yep. love to be among families. Our families are always <laughs> with us. De corazón, Rick, thank you so much. I'm really enjoying talking to you. And thanks so Come much back. for we'll representing. Yeah, let's sweet. do thanks. this again. Please, one more time for Rick Sanchez. Yay! Put the down. Gracias. Put your car in neutral. Chill. Y que Dios te bendiga, mi niña, mi nena. Que Dios te bendiga. Ay, muchísimas gracias, papá. Gracias, gracias. Nos vemos muy pronto, si Dios quiere. Thank you so much. Dale. And we're back. Frank, what do you think? You know? Wow. This guy, uh, Rick, is no joke. No joke. Definitely doing it for us Latinos. And he is a culture shifter, a change maker. We love him. All right. So check him out. His podcast, the Rick Sanchez podcast. Check out Agua Media. Um, and he's on Twitter. All right, you guys. I think we should get into some que lo que. What do you think? Yes. Let's do, do that. Que lo que? Let's do what it. Hey. Okay. Vamos. That all right. Un, dos, tres, vamos a bailar otra vez, que lo que, 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 que lo que. You guys, this is que lo que. Yes, I love que lo que is, man. I Hell love yeah. que lo que too. So what should we do, Frank? Um, We got some shout outs. You want to start it off? What you yeah, want? Rachel, I want to give a huge shout out to Joe Fuckerino. He's a good um, friend. Of... <laughs> Why are you laughing? I think it's Fuckerino, but you could say oh, whatever sorry. fuck you want. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sorry, Joe. Joe Fuckerino. <laughs> but he'll um, fuck around, so the name yeah. actually suits him. That's my boy, man. He's an entrepreneur. Right. He goes by Joe Fucurino on Happy IG. Birthday, Joe. Slash we Mr. Love Superman. You. He's 33 years old. Great guy. Out from Jersey. It's his birthday. Um, man, love to him. Joe, keep on doing your thing. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. I hope All I didn't right. mess up his name, by the way. Sorry, Joe. No, I mean, you know, he doesn't fuck around, like I said. So I'm sure oh, it's man. okay. Uh, he's really a genius. I'm so happy to be around him and like learning from him. Right. Um, yeah. So, uh, is that it, Frank? Any more shout yes. outs? You want to tell That's... them where to follow you? Tell them where to follow you. No, Rachel, look, if they find no? you, they'll okay. find me. You know, you know how we do. Okay. That's fine. That I got to be on my conspiracy stuff all the time. You know, I got to keep it low. I hear you. Yeah, it's fine. I, you know? Yeah, it's cool. If you want people to follow you, fine. If you don't. Yeah. All good. Thank you. Okay. I got a few shout outs. Uh, if it's my turn, I'd like to go. So you guys, my prima, not really a blood cousin, but she's my prima in show business. Latinos Jenny always Saldana. do that. Everybody, Everybody's our cousin, right? Ella mi prima. Primita. This is the first show that we did together years and years ago. Since she invited me to be in one of her shows at the legendary New York and Poets Cafe back in the day when I was just a young buck, uh, I have to shout out Jenny Saldana. Mm. She has a show called check out the title desperate digital dating diary a tipi Ooh. talk Ay, mama. desperate digital dating diary a tipi talk is on january 15th at my home the triad theater basically i have four homes that's my fourth home the triad theater so check this out she's got an opening with the comedian sarita contreras Sarah okay. Contreras is a living legend. If you don't know who she is, Google right. Ella because mm. she's incredible. Right now, she's touring with El Gran Combo. She's wow. for El Gran Combo. Oh, yeah. my God. Her comedy is amazing. And also, it is being hosted by the ladies, our friends of the Wine and Wisdom 5 podcast. In Francis. So Francis. Yep. Mi amiga oh, del alma. Remember? former producer of the Latinos Out Loud podcast, yep. and also DJ by the legend himself, DJ Ralphie Mercado. We had him okay. as a guest here. We sure did. All of these people are incredible to go see. I'm wow. just excited that they're all surrounding Jenny in her show at That's the Chaya Theater. So guys, go to Eventbrite. Tickets are on sale. And uh, look up Desperate Digital Dating Diary at the Triad Theater on January 15th. Um, right. I also have a show coming up at the Triad, a Galentine's show that's on February 13th at the Triad Theater. By the time this episode airs, tickets will be on sale. Really excited to be back in the live theater space after the shows, the Tormenta Telethon and the hilarious show. I just feel 
And I heard and got yelled at and scolded that I must continue doing the hilarious show, that I must continue. And thank you for bestowing me with that responsibility. Thank you. Shout out to Glory Mora and everybody else who was encouraging me because I feel it. 2023, a live element is going to be a strong one this year in everything that I do. Um, so yeah, follow me at Rachel La Loca. Follow the hilarious show. We're out there. And I'm really excited for 2023, Frank. I mean, we me say too. this every year, but as we evolve, as we continue to grow and learn more, especially in the podcasting space, wow, are we learning so much about how it works and just, you know, how to maneuver and also, when it comes down to it, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Why mm. are we doing this? Frank, I don't know if I speak for you, but I can say I'm doing this for the same reasons that I set forth to do it six years ago. For the space, for the right. people, for the culture, for right. the void. Right. For the voices. Right. Don't stop. Continue. For Continue. Every, everything that gets a light shined on it through mm -hmm. Latinos Out Loud. Yep. Latinos Out Loud is more than just a podcast to me. It's more than just a brand. It's a point of elevation. It's a peak on a mountain that we invite all Latinos, e X, Y, Z, however you identify, and Latino allies to come and stand on this peak with us and shout from the Raptors what you're doing. And shout to others like me right now why you're doing it. This is well, the spotlight, people. Wow. Rachel That's Strauss, I, I, I couldn't have said it any better. You took the words right out of my mouth. Thank you, Frank. And thank you to all of the supporters. I know it's the start of the new year. And maybe this message sometimes comes at the end of a year. But F it. I'm going to state it at the beginning. At the Keep it real. Keep it real, son. Yo, I want to thank everybody that... who that has really helped and added and given us more tools to be successful and who have gotten us to this point and those that are still carrying us to get to the next point. Thank you so much. De corazón. This yes. is incredible what we're doing right now. And I say that, that, you know, we're, we're leading the charge, but everybody who is behind us is a part of this brand. Everybody who's been on this show is a part of this brand. Yes. Everybody who's been a host or a guest is part of this brand. E, I'm very appreciative. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everyone. On that note, we out. So no.